I'll now go back and show you how to get the data in to the to the B3 account. First off, I'll go back to our city overview. And this is where you'll see all the buildings you have. If you wanted to create a new building, you would go here to this little green plus sign, add new building. And so what this, this is a, a little tricky. It's like add a new building, um, a new site for this building, or add a building an existing site. So the difference between sites and buildings, a site might be a complex maybe of uh, several different buildings that are interconnected that share meters. So maybe they, you know, your city hall and your police station might each have their own electric meter, but are you on the same steam or on the same natural gas? So I would use um, the site feature for when there is an interconnection of, of meters. Not all of them have to be shared, but some of them are. Um, that's especially useful because it does get a little confusing. Um, if you're trying to split them up without sub, sub metering. But if your buildings have completely independent um, natural gas and electric, even though they're like really ad they're adjacent to each other or they might have a little tunnel, I would do different, create a new site because this way you can look at that building in its entirety like independently. Um, so it might be, you might feel compelled to, to lump them all together on a site but I wouldn't do that unless really they did share a couple overlapping meters. So um, I would say create a new site, and then here you enter. You have to enter in these all these red triangles. So you have to enter in your, the name, address, city, zip code, original occupancy. So if you don't know that quite yet, you know I'd throw in like January first, 1990, um, kind of as a placeholder, um, and then. Space usage is really, it's crucial you can't create a building without a space usage type. And there's quite a few space usages, so it covers a lot of the public sector buildings. Um, so that's really important, and if you're not really sure what one to pick, here this um, question mark, you can click on that and it'll give you more of a rundown. So for some of these bigger more complex buildings like a school, you know, it includes a gymnasium and a, and a cafeteria and an office and, and things like that. Um, so when you're, you, you don't have to include all the different space usage types because you can see here you can make a multi-usage building, but make sure in the description that maybe those are already included. So, you know, City Hall, for example, yeah, includes um, conferences, uh, restrooms, um, and then it's t it tells you what it's not included. So if your City Hall has um, an exercise room, maybe, and you know, then you can add that here as add space usage type. And then the square footage is in a percentage, so you'll have to calculate that if you did have a, an exercise room in your City Hall, and you could say, oh, it's 5%. So that's where you'd include that. And then here, once you click on a space usage type, it will add the average hours and days and months a year of the use. But if you know a more accurate, you should definitely include that. And then also heating and cooled. Maybe for a warehouse, it, there is no heat or cooling. You should definitely go and change that because that'll change your benchmark dramatically. And then, so, and then you make sure you save that. Um, and then, so once your building is created, you're going to want to add meters. So I'll show you quickly how to add meters. You go down here and click Add a New Meter. And you select the energy source of that meter. And then you, you name it. So you can give it a simple name, like Arnest and Acres Greenhouse Electric Meter, or if you have a different way to to name that, but I like to give it a simple name, and then down here you can add the numbers, so account number, meter number. Utility company is uh, required field here as well, and then you start entering in your meter readings. So with electric, you need to have a consumption of kilowatt hours, 
you need to have total dollars, so that's the total number on the end of the bill that includes taxes and fees and all of those charges, and then a start and end date as well. So you can click that and then, you know, start adding, adding in your numbers. Peak kilowatt demand and demand charges are not required. You don't need to add those, but you are certainly welcome to do that if you want to keep track of that. It doesn't affect how the building is benchmarked or anything, but it, it might help you down the line if you're really keeping track of those peak. Peak demand charges can be quite a, a big chunk of your bill. So you keep adding those and then you add a new reading and then you add and then you just keep going adding them. And you have to make sure that this end date lines up with the start date. It's the exact same date. So yours you might feel inclined to say July twenty fifth because that one ended on the 24th, but this program wants them on the same day. So just make sure you do that. And then this little red arrow will give you um, give you any little warning saying, like, you know, that date doesn't match up or something. So once you're done with that, then you hit save. And then you should have your data here um, in, in your building. We can look at this one, for example. This is what this one looks like, um, all of the... Here you can see there was either what there was no, I imagine there was probably no um, peak demand charges going on or it just chose not to enter it. But so that, that's what that'll look like and it'll give you a nice little quick little view here. On this. And this is also nice, it calculates the, the dollar per unit for you. Um, so this is a nice little du to double check maybe if you didn't add, if you added an extra zero or if you forgot a decimal point. Uh, this will help you find any quickly find any like outliers that are probably really off. So you can see this is all around 11, 11 cents um, per unit, which is pretty common here. So we know that's right. And you know when you're using less energy, it's going to be more per unit just because of all the fees and taxes that are service fees. So that's pretty common. Um, but so that's what electricity looks like. Natural gas is pretty similar. Uh, it's actually a little simpler because there's no demand charges, but it's the same idea. And then you can add, uh, there's some other ones too. There's uh, fuel oil, propane, steam, some wood, and those get a little trickier. Um, and I might do a separate little webinar on how to do delivered fuels because it it's not, you know, a monthly bill you get. It's not the same, but it can be done. So that's what this looks like once you get your data in. And then, and then once you get at least 12 months continuous in, then you can start looking at the benchmarking. Without that, it, it can't really provide you with, with any benchmarking measurement because it, it needs a full year. But besides that, then you should be able to, to use the program fully. And then, um, it's that reports tab, which is the helpful one to go back to that. And uh, the benchmarking tab, which I think people should get comfortable with and if you want to see how your buildings are doing.